All right, so to understand the goal of um, the time domain th thermoreflectance theory, um, it's helpful to start out with something called the Nyquist sampling theorem. So let's think about what time domain thermoreflectance is. Um, I'm going to be having some kind of temperature fluctuation, some kind of transient temperature um, that is changing on the surface of my sample. Um, then I am going to try and sense that temperature using a laser beam. Um, I'm going to use a laser like my probe beam, right? So my probe beam is going to come in in a very particular way. Um, I'm going to sample the surface temperature at discrete times. Um, so if you recall, basically our probe beam is just essentially a train of pulses that's going to come in every so often, um, regularly spaced um, over an interval that I'll call capital T, the, the period of, of sampling. And at those instants in time, we are going to sample the temperature. And so the thing that gets picked up by our sensor uh, that is going to be a, or our, our photodiode that's at the end of our system is not really the temperature on our surface, but it's the temperature at those discrete times or what the signal that we collect is going to be indicative of the temperature um, collected at those discrete times. So the, the signal that is generated on our sensor is basically a multiplication of our actual temperature field on the surface of our sample times this discrete sampling. So the function that describes the discrete sampling um, can be written as an infinite series of delta functions um, where each delta function is time delayed um, by an interval well, is you know comes at an interval capital T and it might be time delayed from my original signal by an amount that I'll call T sub D or the time delay. Um, so Nyquist sampling theorem basically covers that situation and what it says is that it actually says something about the Fourier transform of our signal. So um, so the Fourier transform of the signal that's going to show up on our photodiode turns out to be given by some other um, infinite series. What's inside that infinite series? Um, so what's inside that infinite series turns out to be the, um, it's, what is that? That's the, uh, the Fourier transform of the temperature on the surface or of the, the continuous um, thing that we're trying to sense. Um, but at frequencies, but at weird frequencies, right? You'll see that the infinite series actually covers all the different frequencies and then time some weird phase factor that has to do with the time delay. Um, so, you know, what I'll point out is that the thing on the left-hand side, which is the, the Fourier transform of the sampled signal, um, guess what? That is exactly the thing that a lock-in amplifier detects. So the lock-in amplifier is detecting your signal at a particular frequency. That's what the Fourier transform is. Um, and so that thing on the left-hand side is the signal that we actually pick up from the lock-in amplifier. So in order to calculate what that is, what we need to know is the stuff that's on the right-hand side. Um, so what is that stuff on the right-hand side? Um, so that stuff on the right-hand side is, well, we need to do an infinite series of stuff. Um, but we, what we need to know is we need to know the, um, the Fourier transform of the continuous temperature variations, like, like how the temperature is continuously varying on the surface of our sample. And um, we need to know that at essentially all the Fourier frequencies, right? We can't just figure out what that is at one frequency. We need to know what that Fourier transform is at all frequencies. Um, and so that's basically our goal here is we're going to have to figure out what the Fourier transform of the temperature on the surface of our sample is. Um, and I'm not going to go through the proof all that carefully here. Um, you can look this up. This is called the Nyquist sampling theorem. But um, basically the, the long and short of it is that um, if you take the Fourier transform of your sampled signal, um, by definition, that is because these are multiplied, you can use con the convolution theorem, which tells you that um, that involves the convolution of the Fourier transform of the continuous signal times the, well, the, it's the convolution theorem, so there's an offset um, thing that appears inside that integral that is being done in the frequency domain in that case. 
Um, if you actually go to a table of um, Fourier transforms to figure out what this um, time domain sampling thing looks like once you take its Fourier transform, you can calculate what it is, do some plugging in, and um, uh, once you do that, so it ends up involving a, 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 uh, an infinite summation that has some delta functions in it. Um, so I, what I can do is, um, so this thing was supposed to be evaluated at, so uh, what is this? This is the Fourier transform of the continuous thing that's being sampled. And um, if I look at this delta function, there is a common variable. So this one has a, a, a xi in it. This also has a xi. So what a delta function does is it evaluates this function um, whenever these two things are offset by the same amount. So I just basically take this and replace it with f minus m over the period and get rid of the delta functions. And that's how I get to the final expression. Um, and so that's basically what the that's what's happening here. 